This week on OSP, we talk about dreams achieved, dreams shattered, and dreams of making the big time. And we talked to an all-conference star, the coach that helped him along the way, and a young man with an opportunity so many can only wish for. Welcome to another edition of Oscars to Sports Pulse. I'm Jason Van Zen. And I'm Jason Madison. Headed into last weekend's USBC Intercollegiate Sectionals in Fairview Heights, Illinois, both men's and women's bowling programs had aspirations of advancing into national tournament, but only one team had reached its hopes. Now remember, Jay, the top four teams from the sectional, as well as three other sectionals across the nation, will qualify for the big show. We begin with the Lady Statesman who entered the contest ranked as the number 11th team in the nation. Trying to strike the big time, Penn got its chance when it placed third out of 17 teams with 11,957 pins in 64 Baker games. A Baker game is one 10-frame game bowled by five rotating team members, meaning each bowler will only bowl twice per game. The Navy and Gold never fell outside the top four and eclipsed the 200 mark 17 times with a game-high 231. Number eight, Newman, Kansas narrowly won the tournament with 11,985 pins, while number 20, Calumet St. Joseph, Indiana, and number four, Robert Morris, Illinois, was fourth to round out the qualifying group. The four pro programs will now meet up with 12 more teams from three other sectionals at the team's championship April 19th through the 21st in Lincoln, Nebraska. Also competing for a bid of nationals with a statesman bowling team. Penn hit the lanes as the number four team at nationals projected to keep its qualifying position during the tourney. The team surpassed the 200 pin mark 28 times out of 64 occasions and collected a game high of 269. But with all that good news, their dreams were crushed. Penn placed fifth out of 20 teams with 12,567 pins. William Penn finished 84 pins behind the final qualifier. 10th rank, Comet St. Joe, Indiana, and it's 12,651 pin total. Number one, Robert Morris, Illinois, won the team title easily. 13,159 pins, while number 21, Toledo, Ohio, and the Midwest Collegiate Conference rival number 15, St. Ambrose, were the other two teams to round out the qualifying field. Before the team tournament began, more than 130 bowlers on the men's and women's side competed in the six-game single-sectional Friday. None of William Penn's bowlers were, were able to make it past the qualifying round. Juniors Nathan Namini and Samantha Powell highlighted the programs during the qualifier for singles. Namini finished 11th out of 162 bowlers with 1,274 pins, just 45 away from the last slot, while Powell just missed qualifying for nationals by four pins with her fifth place showing of 1,238 pins. Only the top four bowlers could advance. Dropping down a level, Oskaloosa's McKenna Beldheisen and McKenna Gott earned all Little Hawkeye Conference basketball honors. Veldheisen was second in the conference in scoring with 13 and a half points, third with assists with 76, and averaged four and a half rebounds per game. Gott was fourth in scoring with 12.2 points per game and was the conference top shot blocker with 52. She was also second in the conference in rebounding with 9.6 per contest. Moving back to the college level for men's basketball, Penn junior Davis Spielbauer was honored for his excellence in the classroom. He earned a spot in this year's 106 honoree Dactronics NAIA Division II men's basketball scholar athlete list. Spielbauer, a first time honoree, owns a 3.84 GPA while majoring in biology. On the court this winter, he averaged 8.2 points per game and 1.9 rebounds. The academic accolade is his second of the year and he was also picked is the Coceta Academic All-District 5 College Division honoree. To be eligible for the award, the athlete must be at least a junior and maintain a cumulative grade point average of 3.5 or above on a 4.0 scale. When we come back, JMAD sits down with Statesman Head Basketball Coach John Henry to discuss this year's trip to Nationals after a four-year absence. And later in the show, Penn basketball player Alan Douglas joins us in studio to discuss his breakout performance this year when he helped WPU to the big show. You should see my bank. It can do awesome things. Mom says it's just like the four seasons. Always there. Helping communities grow and be a better place to live and work. 
all because my bank lives here too. Live Iowa, work Iowa, bank Iowa. Member FDIC. Bates Funeral Chapel, where community is more than just a location. Where compassion is more than just a feeling. Where history is more than just a time. Bates Funeral Chapel, where service is more than just a word. Welcome back to OSP. We're pleased to be joined by John Henry, head men's basketball coach for WPU. Now, Coach, you guys just came back from Branson. It was the first trip that you've had since, uh, since your 08 trip, and that was when you guys went back, uh, back to back those, those two years. Um, what was it like going back down there and being able to compete for a national title? Oh, fantastic. Obviously, you want to be in that position, play with the top 32 teams in the nation. Um, an amazing, amazing trip, a great ride throughout. You know, we weren't sure we were going at all until mm -hmm. that Sunday night um, with Ambrose winning. But I would say this was even more gratifying than the 07 and 08, although we had won conference championships that year, so we cut down some nets. This one was gratifying to see a team grow and adapt throughout. This wasn't a team that was, may you would maybe say, um, as stacked as maybe your 07, your 08 teams were. But these, this, this group was, you know, a bunch of grinders. They were hard Very workers. And, and that's how they were able to uh, maybe uh, stay in that number two seed in the MCC so they were able to actually go down there. You've, you've alluded to grinders many times with me, and, and that's perfect because, you know, we had to win a triple overtime game, and then we had to play that team again and beat them again in two overtimes mm -hmm. to get there. Um, grinding, guys playing out of position, guys playing with injuries, a lot of new faces, one senior. Um, adding Keith Steffick at semester, the, the adaptation that happens with that. Very tough schedule. We played more teams at the Nationals than anybody else that was there. Now we were 0-6 against those teams, but we had played a very difficult schedule to get there. Um, yeah, just uh, good hard-nosed kids that, that kept with it and stayed with it, and they got to reap the benefits by going to Nationals. Dang near pulled it off. And you guys had a tough draw, number 30 seed. And you're going against number three, Davenport, Michigan. And you guys gave them the toughest time, I think, in the opening round, uh, dropping it 85 81. But you guys were up at halftime, 33 32. And this is also a Michigan team that actually went to the Final Four before they ended up dropping out of the tournament. Phenomenal group of athletes at, at Davenport with a great coaching staff. They went to the Elite Eight last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they're going to end up having three All Americans. I saw two of their kids made the All Tournament team last night. Um, yeah, we, we lost by four. Uh, we battled the whole time. Um, there was quite moments there where they called timeouts and were upset, you know, with their, their, the player, their, their coaches were with their players. You know, it was, it was tough on them. Uh, we gave them a good go. The next round, I think they won by 30. Mm -hmm. uh, the following round, they won by 14. And then they lost to Oregon Tech in the final four by five. So, which Oregon Tech won the national title last night. You can play that, you play them, we played those, but yeah. I just know that my team and my guys, when we played Davenport, we came to play, gave them all they got. We got a lot of great compliments from people that were down there, including Davenport people that, you know, our kids left it all on the floor with a lot of heart. After the game, you know, the, there are no moral victories in a loss, but there is dignity in the way you, you do lose the game. And uh, I couldn't have been happier for our guys. There was a lot of talk of whether or not we belonged to be there or we deserve to be there. And I think without a doubt, we, we definitely represented not only our university, our families, our community, and our conference. And, and we talked earlier about um, you only having one senior out there on the court. And that was Alan Douglas. And he had that opportunity to really shine during this game. And you were telling me that he played all five positions. And it's not just one man, but if we were able to highlight just one guy at the moment, I mean, it would be. Alan. I don't think any of his teammates would be angry with highlighting him um, and, and talking about one man. Um, he had 36 points and seven rebounds, 25 points in the second half. And uh, probably the biggest highlight of, of the weekend or the week that we were down there. No coach in the country and no bench in the country in the history of basketball, you can look it up, find somebody, has cheered a basket as time expired, losing by five the way that we did. He scored his, his thousandth point in the very last second of his career on a basket at the national tournament. 
we were jumping up and down as if we had won the game. Some of the Davenport people were looking at us like we were reading the scoreboard wrong. With 10 seconds left, you're down, you know, six, seven, whatever we were. And, uh, you know, obviously you're going to lose the game. We knew that he needed 36 points going into the game to score 1,000. We joked around about wouldn't it be great if he scored all 36 tomorrow night. And we said, you know, if he scores 36, we'll, we'll definitely win the game. Right. That didn't happen, but with 34 points with 10 seconds left, I just told him, go to the basket, go to the basket. And he looked at me like, I should be shooting a three, we're down seven. I said, go to the basket. Went to the basket, scored, and everybody was jumping up and down. It was a very good moment for us, and then the realization that you've lost, you know, the tears set in and all that. But for him to get his 1,000 points in two years is pretty remarkable. I had one other player, Danny Lund, who scored 995 in two years, and I didn't think that would ever be accomplished again. Allen's an amazing guy, uh, got a great future ahead of him. He can choose to do anything he wants. Uh, he's got a couple of different things he's working on right now, but great leader, great player, very versatile as a player. Played five positions for us down there. We posted him up on the block as a center. He brought the ball down as a point guard, uh, shot the three, dribbled it, passed it, did everything he could possibly do. Um, it's remarkable that you're in a locker room with, with 16 young men that, you know, most of them are upset and emotional and crying or whatever. And I had several of his teammates pull me aside, you know, when I'm talking to him about the game and they're like, I wish we could play one more game for Allen. There was no talk of for us or for me or for them or individually them saying, I wish I could play one more game. It was like, I wish I'd have done, made one more play for Allen. I wish I could have helped Allen a little more. Um, and that's, that's awesome, and, and he deserves everything that he gets. We have a young squad that's coming back next year, and you guys will be able to kind of pick up where you left off and, and go from there. Well, that's the plan. Um, you know, with our success going to the national tournament and finishing second in the conference, we're hoping that that can lead, translate into next year. Um, it'll be decided in the weight room, maybe with a couple of recruits. We could use a couple of pieces to go with what we have. Mm -hmm. You can't replace an Allen Douglas. You can just hope that everybody else picks up their roles and then maybe a piece in a couple of new guys that can form their own legacy and like really he did. We learned that from this year's team, especially how they were 17 and 15 and were able to go in there and make a decent impact on, national, on the national scene. We shook the number three team in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to think that, that our game woke them up and got, helped get them to the Final Four. Um, their coach said as much. And, uh, you know, it was great. You know, like I told you off, off camera, it's like that uh, movie that's just came out, that real steel with the small machine, and we just kept plugging. Um, it was great. We actually watched that movie on the way down is why that's such a big deal. Yeah. Well, that coach, uh, I wish you guys the best of luck, and I'm looking forward to next season. Everybody at home, we'll be right back. The doctor is in and no appointments are needed. Come to Dr. Salami's today and let the doc heal your hunger. Come to Dr. Salami's for friendly staff, casual atmosphere, and good friends. When you get here, you'll be treated to affordable prices, hearty portions, and good food. So come on down to Dr. Salami's today, your place for good friends, good food, good times. If you buy the renegade idea that investing should be discussed face to face, not just inbox to inbox. If you believe that your relationship with your investments shouldn't be long distance, Join the nearly 7 million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. Visit one of your friendly Oskaloosa reps today. I chose William Penn for its commitment to academic excellence. I chose William Penn for its commitment to athletics. I chose William Penn for his commitment to diversity. I chose William Penn to become a leader. Why do you choose William Penn? It's March Madness time and up is down and down is up and two of Iowa Premier teams have extended their season this month. First we're going to talk about the rebuilt Iowa Hawkeye program that hosted its first round NIT tournament Tuesday night. The Iowa Dayton game drew an Iowa crowd of 13,190 hungry for postseason basketball. 
It was the first postseason game for the Iowa Hawkeyes since 2006, and the fans' hunger was satisfied with the 84-75 home triumph. No two other NIT crowds Tuesday added up to as much as 11,447. No one but Iowa had anything to resemble a near sellout venue. Iowa now headed to Oregon this Sunday for tip-off against the Ducks at 4 p.m. Central Time on ESPNU. It was just two years ago when Fred Hoiberg took over the Iowa State B-Ball program. He faced many doubters. Could a rising executive in the NBA transition to the head coaching job in the Big 12? Well, if making the NCAA tourney for the first time since 2005 is a way to judge success, then he's done good. Not only that, he is now the Big 12 Co-Coach of the Year as the Cyclones ride a 22-10 record into the A seed in the tournament. Iowa State, a program revitalized this season by Horberg's decision to bring in talented transfers like Chris Allen and Royce White faced defending national champion Connecticut Thursday in Louisville, Kentucky. The Cyclones led the entire game against the defending champs. The Cinderella season continues for ISU with a 77-64 first round win. Iowa State plays the number one seed Kentucky Saturday. When we return, we set down with William Penn's newest inductee to the 1,000-point club for the men's basketball program. We'll be right back. Promise me, son, not to do the things I've done. I'm going to love you forever, forever and ever. Amen. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. I turned 21 in prison doing life without parole. Stars, the classic hits, K-I-I-C. You know what makes spring so much fun in Iowa? The colors! Mahaska Drug and Oskaloosa has them all in everything that's new for spring. So look over our fun and unique decorations, accents, and flowers. We have everything you need to get your home and your life in a joyful springtime mood. Shop Mahaska Drug and turn that winter drab into a dazzling array of colors and enjoy the new life all around us. Come visit us this week and take the time to look around. Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa, it's big, really big. Welcome back. In studio this week, Alan Douglas scoring a thousand points in just two years of his career in his short time here at Penn. Alan, thanks for coming in. Let's uh, reflect back on what your two years meant to you while you were here. Uh, it was a great two years, actually. The first year, we didn't have too good of a season. I was a junior, a couple underclassmen. We had two, we had three seniors, Boris, Dion, and uh, Nick Coffey. So it was a growing point. We learned a lot during the season. I think that's what helped go into this season with returners as me, Blake, and Brandon. I think that helped us a lot this year, learning from the mistakes we made that year. What was it that uh, you brought forward um, this season, especially with it being your last time out there on the court? It was the only senior I was looked to, I was called upon to make decisions under the clutch, you know. Being here for two years, having one year under my belt in MCC, I learned a lot of things, so I kind of was looked at to make a lot of decisions. You know, we look at you as a team player and you talk about your teammates a lot and you played somewhere else before you came here. What attracted you to come here in this program? Um, I liked it actually. I came, when I came down here to visit, I liked the whole coaching staff from Coach Kiambi Thomas to McKinstry to especially Coach Henry. I liked the, the warm and welcome feeling they gave me. Like I was a part of not only a basketball team, but more of a family. If we kind of fast forward back uh, to this season, I mean, I know it just, it just and it kind of mm -hmm. still stings in a way. But you guys went to uh, Nationals, and you guys, you guys were the 30 seed going against the number three, uh, three seed in Davenport, Michigan. Yeah. Now, a lot of people thought that uh, it might be a blowout for you guys, but you guys hung in there and actually gave them uh, the toughest time until they actually made it to the Final Four. Uh, the game we played them was a pretty tough game. We were ahead a couple of times. They were ahead, and eventually pulled it out. But I believe if they go down, you got to go down fighting. I believe we went down swinging. So when we look at your career this year, and we a thousand points. How did you get to that point? I mean, tell us about some of the teammates that came in and, and made that happen for us. Um, well, actually, I got to give a lot of credit to Blake Walker. He was uh, he's uh, normally a two, three, a wing guy. He came in. We didn't have a point guard, so he came in and played that role. He actually um, broke a record this year with the assists. And it was just he was called upon to do something that he wasn't used to, and so I got to give him a lot of credit for that too. 
And you actually took up um, several roles this year or several different positions, especially um, I think giving up your, your power forward position at one point when Keith Steffick came in during the second half of your season. And so you were another one of those guys who had to kind of just step in and be a utility player in a yeah. way. Uh, I actually did, and I, and I think it was uh, for the better of the team, actually. You know, Keith, we were pretty interchangeable. He likes, like, when teams play zoning us, I would go back to the power forward and let him play his perimeter game. He was a better perimeter shooter than me, so I think it kind of worked out good for us. Man to man, there's a lot of mismatches when I went down to the block and you put him on the wing, 6'8", uh, 6'9", six, six, on the wing, and it's kind of hard to stop. You know, I'm hearing a lot of passion in your voice, and it's great to hear that. But is there anything that sticks out in your mind from the years that you've been here that you look back and say, man, that was awesome. That moment right there was really a key for me. Mm, actually, this year, the my first triple overtime game playing against Ashford, that was something that you only dream of when you're in the backyard and act like you're going down to the buzzer and it happens. So, I mean, that was very nice to be a part of. You're wrapping up your season here as one of the best basketball players Penn has seen in a while. What's next for you? Um, I, would, I would love to continue my career, but as everybody knows, basketball does come to a stop at a point in time. So I, I would love to go to grad school and get my master's in marketing to go along with my degree in communications. And um, after that, if, if not, I would, I would love to go to the military too. If there's anything that you could maybe say to uh, your future, I mean, your past teammates and, and how they have to move forward and kind of fill your shoes and other individuals' shoes, what would you say to those guys? Uh, I would tell them, me personally, because I know everybody very close to our family, I just, I look for big things for them next year. You got a lot of returners, a lot of people that's going to put in a lot of work this postseason to get back there. They had the feeling, they know what it's like to get there, they know what it's like to play on that floor. And I'm sure they want to do it again, but be successful this time. We have a special treat in store for you as future NFL prospect Damon Harrison joins us for an exclusive interview before his pro day next week. Stay tuned. Whoa. Sure, you can take big bites of the handcrafted quarter pounder with cheese, but soon it's half gone. What have I done, you think? Your bites get smaller as you try to savor what's left with scientific precision. And as that last bittersweet bite of 100% beef and cheese and cheese tickles over your taste buds, you think, until next time, dear friend. Until next time. Mm. The simple joy of savoring every bite. You know what makes spring so much fun in Iowa? The colors. Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa has them all in everything that's new for spring. So look over our fun and unique decorations, accents, and flowers. We have everything you need to get your home and your life in a joyful springtime mood. Shop Mahaska Drug and turn that winter drab into a dazzling array of colors and enjoy the new life all around us. Come visit us this week and take the time to look around. Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa, it's big, really big. Winter is here and they're making snow at Seven Oaks, Central Iowa's premier ski, snowboard, and snow tube area. We make snow all season long to give you the best conditions possible. Seven Oaks now has two triple chairlifts to get you to the top of the hill for plenty of thrills. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring a bus to Seven Oaks. Seven Oaks, we're your destination for outdoor recreation. Ski and save every Friday night on the Family 4-Pack. And on Sundays, kids 8 and under ski free with a paying adult. Ski Seven Oaks, an easy drive from Des Moines and Ames. Thursday afternoon in the Penn Activity Center, defensive juggernaut Damon Harrison is getting in one of his last workouts before his pro day. But what has been going on? I mean, in your own in your own personal life, since uh, word has gotten out about you possibly going into the NFL, and I mean, you're you're training right now. You you have an agent. I mean, what's what's life like for Damon Harrison right now? I mean, it's pretty crazy. A whole lot of phone calls, emails, text messages from everybody. You know, every, everybody wants to see you. They want to talk to you. I mean, and I love it. I enjoy the attention. You know, I'm not the type of guy who would tell anybody no for anything. You know. Before returning to his old stomping grounds here in Oski, the NFL prospect has been training in Boca Raton, Florida for the past month and a half on a six-day regiment. Mondays, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're going full go, weightlifting, um, running, agility drills, and on Wednesday is our yoga day. And Saturday, they call it the um, extreme workout day where we go on the hill, it's like the hill's maybe 100 yards up, upwards and on the incline, and we run that like six times. So Saturdays are 
you know, pretty hectic. Working on his speed, power, and overall strength wasn't hard to continue, but transitioning mentally from a college athlete to a pro has been a small hardship. The physical part of it is done, um, and there's a whole lot of tests taken, sitting, sitting around, waiting, people poking at your mind, trying to see what you're thinking, and you know, it is the, the speed of the game and, and just life in general has changed drastically. Not only that, but the local venue where he's going to show off his skills changed. Instead of Penn's campus, he's heading to Iowa State's, and the move may boost Harrison's stock in the NFL draft. It's going to help a whole lot because in Ames, it'll be some actual owners there and the GMs, the guys who make the decisions, and they get a chance to see me firsthand as opposed to having a scout just coming with a piece of paper saying this is what he do. And then everybody out telling me they want to see me go up against the offensive linemen they have there, so that'll be fun. Besides the rare opportunity putting a smile on the Louisiana's face, so do the people in Oskaloosa, his home away from home. So that's one thing I like about Oskaloosa. Um, it, it's not one person here who I think is against me. Everybody's all for me because they know I'm representing the program at the end of the day. And, um, and the, the more attention I can bring to the school, that'll be you know, better for them in the future because you know, guys will know that it's not just a, a regular football program being run here in Oskaloosa. They're actually producing players. Harrison went on to say, depending on his performance, he could be drafted as high as the fourth round. That's it for this week's show. Be sure to catch replays of OSP Fridays at 10 p.m., Saturdays at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., and 10 p.m., as well as Sundays at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and 10 p.m. right here on MCG Channel 7. And if you're surfing the web, watch us and the rest of the CRI team online at www.criTV.org. Big story of the week for me, Allen Douglas, last shot of his career, hitting 1,000 points. Indeed, he's also an All-American this year. Uh, we just found that out, as well as the 14th top player in the nation. So the man did his thing this year, uh, going out on a, definitely some high notes. For Jay Madison, I'm Jason Van Zetten. We'll be back next Friday with a brand new episode of OSP.